Hello, WealthLab 8 users. Glitch here. Today, we'll talk about what's new in WealthLab 8 Build 15 and specifically some things in our Data Extensions extension. So extensions in WealthLab 8 are different pieces of functionality that you can plug into the product, and they're all available on the WealthLab website if you click Extensions. So if I scroll down, uh, you will see data extensions. And this is the extension that includes the things that I'm going to cover in this video. So first of all, let me open a chart and type in a symbol, dollar sign SPX. This is the S&P 500 index. And we have data going back to 1928. The source is Q data, so that comes with Wealth Lab, completely free and included. And I want to change the scale to monthly, first of all. And what I want to show is uh, an indicator in our data extensions. So if I go on over to the indicators tab, and I close these nodes here. You'll see data extensions. There's a handful of new indicators that come with this extension, and one of them is FRED. It's a indicator that pulls in data from the Federal Reserve website. So these days, the hot topic is the Fed funds rate. They are increasing the rate and trying to cause economic deterioration. What does that do for stocks is the question that I wanted to answer. I mean, the conventional wisdom is out there, but the purpose of Wealth Lab is to get the data, run the numbers yourself, and draw your own conclusions from the data. So this FRED indicator has a, a series name that you have to provide. This is a little bit tricky. The default value is unrate, which signifies unemployment rate. If you go on the FRED website, you'll see a, a list of all of the items that are available. And the one that I'm interested in, and I had to go to the website, the FRED website to get the name of the, of the Fed funds rate, but it is Fed funds. So if I type in Fed funds here and then click OK, then I get my funds rate plotted here on the chart. Going back to, uh, I think, I believe we have data back until 1955 for this. Let's see. Scroll back, and here we are. Our funds rate starts at 1954. So that's quite a bit of data. So you can see what do stocks do when the rate is increasing as opposed to decreasing? Well, I, you know, kind of eyeballed the chart a little and I mean in my in my view I saw here the rates are increasing it looks like the market was increasing here the rates are decreasing it looks like the market is going down you know back in 2000 so you know just looking at these relationships visually you may draw like one conclusion here again the rates were going up the market was going up uh, rates are going down the market is going down what's going on there that's contrary to Popular belief. Well, in order to solve this once and for all, I created a strategy. And let's open it up here. I called it fun, Fed Funds Rate. And the strategy link, I'll post this on our forum on Wealth Lab. The link will be in the description. So simply what I'm doing is creating the FRED indicator in the code here, plotting it. And then I'm going through each bar of the chart. And if the Fed rate is up, um, accumulating the monthly returns for that period. Also, I'm accumulating the monthly returns for when the Fed funds rate is decreasing. And then at the end, in this cleanup method, I am dividing the total monthly returns by the number of occurrences for both periods where the Fed fund rate is increasing and decreasing. And I'm running it on the SPX index going back to 1955 monthly. So let's run that and take a look at the chart, which should show us the result. 
So here's our result. The strategy colors the background red when the funds rate is increasing and it colors it green when the rate is decreasing. And so here's our result. Uh, there's actually more periods of rising rates than there are falling rates on a monthly basis here. And the average monthly return during periods of rising rates is 0 0.45 in this SPX. And falling rates, it's 0 0.94. So it's almost, or it's actually more than double. So yeah, actually during periods of rising rates, the average monthly return has been lower. So that's something to keep in mind. You can use this indicator as a filter maybe in your strategy. Uh, and what I actually implemented for build 15 in the data extensions is a new position sizer. So let's go back to our strategy settings here and let's go, let's change our position size from fixed value. Let's change it to advanced pause sizer. So this is an advanced position sizer that's new in the data extensions and it is called rising falling rates. So if I click that and then configure it here, I can use the same position size values as normal. Like let's say I want to go 10% of equity, but I have a couple other options here during rising rate periods. I can multiply whatever position size I established by a specific multiple. So for example, 0 0.5 to cut the position size in half during those periods. And then there's another multiple to control the position size for periods of rising rates. So with this position sizer, you can adjust your strategy positioning based on how the Fed fund rate is doing. So those are a couple new things in data extensions. Uh, one other new item that cone added to data extensions this time around is another new indicator recessions so if i drag this over i get some nice red lines here that indicate periods of uh, when the economy the u.s economy was in a recession uh, as reported uh, by the source uh, website it's a specific website that we queried to get the official start and end date of the US recessions. So note though that this uh, is flagged as is peaking ahead because typ typically what happens is once a recession is identified, it's not until maybe several months into the future where they then say, okay, there were two consecutive quarters of contraction. So we're gonna call a recession as of this start date. So you can't necessarily use this in a strategy because of this, but you can kind of, you know, eyeball and see. What I found interesting with this is in just about every recession in here, uh, and this is goes along with conventional thinking, but the market starts rebounding before the end of the recession. So it happened here, 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 here. So well before the end of the recession, the market is forward looking. So it starts taking off before the end of the recession. So that was interesting. Uh, so a couple of new indicators in uh, data extensions. So take a look at that very timely stuff for what's going on now in the markets. And I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, hope you enjoy Build 15. And I'll see you all on the forums.